Welcome in to USL Pro Weekly. My name is Nicholas Murray. Very pleased to be joined by David Wagner. And David, lots to get to this week, starting off with the continued success of the Richmond Kickers. Another couple of games, still undefeated, now 17 games, a new USL Pro regular season record. How are the Kickers being able to keep this going? Uh, yeah, I think it comes down to depth for, for the Kickers, that they're, they go deep in every position and that they could come in game after game if they get a little knock, a little injury, somebody comes up, comes in and fills the void. Also, you see some of those lone players that they've had from D.C. They've gone back and forth, and even with the contribution that they've been making, other players come in and step up, so it's not as if they're reliant just on one or two players this season. Evidence of that, Luke Vercolone scoring on Friday night yep. in the draw against Rochester, and then Michael Seaton continuing his good run of form. He had an assist for DC United on Friday yep. night in their friendly, and then he comes back following night, gets the game winner against the Harrisburg City Islanders. Richmond just one point off Orlando City, who were the victim of a late goal, and we saw a lot of late goals yep. in this past weekend of action. Dayton picks up a late draw, Rochester even against Richmond, and then Phoenix, late winner against Antigua, yeah. Charlotte, late winner against Wilmington. Late, late game drama and, and a, lot of, a lot of excitement as the race for the playoff seats up. Yeah, definitely. I'll work backwards with that one. I mean, as far as Charlotte, I mean, they did it again. I mean, I think uh, we don't expect anything less from the Eagles at this point. Uh, with, with, with Phoenix, just heartbreaking for Antigua, obviously. Um, for, you know, for Phoenix, nice to get the win for them. Uh, they really needed it badly, um, but at the same time, it was a it was a good effort by them. Um, as far as Dayton and Orlando, very difficult circumstances for Dayton. Even impressive being down a man, coming back, getting that goal. But we know they're so tough at home and they're so resilient in all their games this season. So just really impressive all the way around for these clubs. Now that draw by Dayton, we've got a little bit of separation now between yeah. the top eight and the bottom five. There's a six point gap between. Tampa Bay and Charleston on 27 points, and then Wilmington and Pittsburgh on 21 in the ninth and 10th spots. Do you see a team out there that's maybe able to bridge that gap and make a run to breaking into those top eight spots? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think the two teams that we're talking about is potentially Wilmington and Pittsburgh. Wilmington and Pittsburgh. Wilmington obviously has the pedigree; they were in the championship last year. Um, for me, they've been really up and down this season. They've had some good performances that look like old. I don't know if they quite have it. Um, I'm going to need some, to see more out of them as far as wins. I think Pittsburgh has shown that they have that ability, but they haven't quite had the consistency. I think Pittsburgh can be a very explosive team, and if they get really on a run, they could be that team that bridges that gap and get that eight, gets that eight spot. Well, the Riverhounds have a chance to start making that run on Wednesday night as they host Orlando City at Highmark Stadium. You can watch that game live on USL Nation, and we hope you'll join us tomorrow for an edition of the USL Pro Weekly Podcast, where we'll be talking with Sacramento owner Warren Smith about the addition of Preki as the club's first head coach. Hope you tune in for that. Hope to see you later in the week for the USL Pro Weekend Preview. But until then, for David, my name's Nicholas. Thanks for joining us.